How to build Lee's General Store, a HO scale model railway building. Hi modellers, I'm Chris, the modeler at ABR Model Works, and welcome to the build video for Lee's General Store. The detailed instructions that come in the kit are also in sync with this video and have time-coded chapter markers for easy navigation. This is a great tool for both experienced and novice modellers. It allows the experienced modeler to skip ahead and the novice modelers to actually watch the kit being built. I've also included some great tips and some how-tos and some thoughts on how I go about building a kit like this. The instructions and the video are broken up into three main areas. Preparation, painting and assembly of the panels into the main structure. The 3D printed scenic detail components and then bringing them all together to make a finished building. Now here's your first tip. You can save quite a bit of time on building this model by jumping between working with the panels and the 3D parts while you're waiting for either glue or paint to dry. Now before we start, don't forget to subscribe and ring that little bell icon as we'll be posting updates on the modular model building system that will help you with this build and others. As always, I welcome your feedback and questions as they help us make better models and better video content for you. So please add your feedback and questions in the comment section below. Now lastly, as this is one of our first kit build videos, it's not as polished as I'd like. So please forgive me, I will work to do better, but I can cook a mean lamb roast. We're going to build a strip mall style of shop. This is a very simple kit. It's actually aimed at both increasing the scenic value on your railway by having a shopping precinct or a single shop. But at the same time, part of the purpose of this kit, it's a starter kit. It's something for someone to cut their teeth on, so to speak. It's um, very straightforward. Even for beginners, could quite comfortably knock this out in uh, a day if they can dry the paint or, uh, or a weekend, giving the paint plenty of time to dry. When I say dry the paint, you can use things like hair dryers or a uh, dehumidifier to uh, dry things a little bit faster. Our basic components are single front panel, a new panel that we've made for this kit but it will be available for other things as well. The finish of it is a, is a concrete building so this has the openings for uh, door and windows so that's the rear wall this is the front wall a new 3d component which is the shop front with uh, with awning that's how it comes to you you just cut it away but that's basically what it will look like another new uh, component we now have um, a range of one and a half width panel so that's the standard width three inch or 76 millimeter panel and this is a four and a half inch panel uh, so that's going to be the side wall, so there's two of those, a concrete floor, and for the roof, on this one, we've got a laser etched trim deck style of, of roofing. There are our, our main parts. Um, as always, we start with sanding them down and preparing them. So the sanding process, fairly straightforward and simple. Just a little a light rub to remove any debris and uh, glue that's left behind from the laser cutting and engraving process. The most important aspect at this stage, especially if you are a beginner, is that working with anything that produces dust is uh, something where you need to have uh, a well-ventilated room or do it outside. I have a spray booth. I'll be starting that up in a moment to uh, get the air flowing through, get rid of the dust. So let's uh, let's get started. Okay, so just a very light rub. You don't need to get too carried away. It's just getting rid of the rubbish that's left from the laser cutting process and any glue. Both sides need to be sanded because we will be painting the inside. Now one thing I didn't mention, I don't take any of the panel or parts, whether it's a panel, brickwork, out of their holding frame before sand because it helps keep the piece together in the sanding process and there are some parts that are a little bit fine and you want the extra support that the frame gives. So leave it in there, also gives you something to grip. 
Now the thinner MDF that we use is a slightly different wood structure but the critical part here is to get the uh, surface clean so that paint we're not going to be able to sand inside the ribs so we're going to sand the surface and the ribs won't matter as much because uh, the way it will go together uh, it'll have a bit of texture to it but it won't, um, won't be super noticeable. And all we're wanting to do is just slightly expose the MDF material underneath. It doesn't have to be perfect, just enough to get that timber exposed so uh, the paint has a nice surface to adhere to. Okay, so there we go, we've got everything sanded. Okay, so we now have all of the panels sanded. The next step is to pop them out from their holding frames. Just simply a case of pushing through from the back and releasing the little tabs. With this one we pop out the window hole and we will remove the uh, tabs. Now with this part you need to be a little bit careful because the top and the bottom are cut and are held together with a series of little tabs to keep them in place. What you don't want to do is break that away at the same time. Now if you do, it's not a big problem because you can glue it back on, but nevertheless, let's try and do it without that. So holding it from the front and supporting across the joint, we just break the tabs away. The same down the bottom here, we break each one of those. So we now have the uh, tab section out. These pieces are rubbish so they can go in the bin and I'll now go ahead and do the same to, uh, to the other pieces. These section at the bottom and the section within the others um, these are supports for the roof and uh, the joints where the panels go together. They won't be needed for this particular build so we'll just pop that off to one side. Now we'll also pop off the roof pieces, get them out at the same time. Okay, so next what we're going to do is we're going to file away the little tabs to allow the panels to clip together. And you will have noticed that I'm working on a piece of galvanized iron. And the reason for that is that I like to use magnets to hold things together when I'm gluing them. One of the most important parts of the process is that the panels line up square. So I take a two foot rule or a 600 mil rule. I grab a couple of magnets to hold it down on the bench like so. That gives us a nice stable straight edge and we start sanding these. Now again, when you're sanding them, make sure you hold over the joint line so that you don't snap the uh, top or bottom away. Just a light sand to remove the little tabs on the inside and both in the corners. Okay, that's the back wall. This is going to be the front wall. Okay, now they're all done. We will test fit the parts and make sure they line up along the bottom. The two side walls to the front, it's fine. And then the back wall, yep, that fits on that one. And that fits together on that one. Okay, one of the things I like to do uh, on these panels where they are cut top and bottom is before we paint, is that we'll just fill that little gap with some of the speed bond glue. It'll do two things, it'll fill it from the painting point of view but it'll also add a little bit of strength to it. So using the little applicator squeeze down a bit of glue and very carefully line up on the line and just run your applicator down the line squeezing a little bit of glue into it. Doesn't matter if you get a little bit out to the sides and then what you'll do is just wipe that over with your finger. I like to run my fingernail through the groove just to make sure that the glue is pushed in. It also then allows for the architectural detail of the the line. Okay, I'll we'll put that to one side. Keep going doing the front face of the others. So we'll give that about five minutes or so to dry so it's nice and actually the first one is touch dry so we'll keep going. Let's roll it over and do the same thing on the back. We do need to allow a little bit of time now for the glue to dry so that when we sand it, it doesn't uh, clog up the uh, sanding sponges. So we'll give that about five, 10 minutes. Come back, give it a little bit of a sand. Okay, 
So the next step in the build is to glue the roof support to the wall panels on the inside of the panels. So we're having to look at this in a mirror image. We're looking at it from the inside, the back side. This is the back wall, the thinner version, and the front wall has the thicker side, and then the two side walls are on an angle. The side walls are glued on so that the base lines up with this cut line. When you glue them on, you need to have the front edge in line with that recess for the tab and the back the same. So that's the side walls. For the front and the back, they need to be again lined up with the cut line, but they're inside by basically the thickness of the pieces on the side. And what I tend to do with that is I glue these pieces on first. I use the supports as spacers to make sure that it is inside. So I'll show you how I go about doing that. So we get our speed bond glue, give it a bit of a shake, just put a thin line of glue down the center, not too much because you want it to dry quickly. Place it on there, give it a little bit of a rock around to get the, the glue to spread. And then you're lining up with the cut line like so, and you take a spacer, and you make sure that it's far enough across that it's inside that line there. Now I'm doing that, I've just moved it a little bit off center. It's the same at that end, there's a little bit of a gap, so that's fine. Just double check to make sure we're running along the cut line. We'll place that down on the metal bench top, put a magnet on it, help squeeze it down and to get the glue to uh, spread and dry, giving a really nice strong bond. Same process for the back piece. Also making sure that you're gluing it to the top, not the bottom. Again, we'll just put it on there, give it a little bit of a slide to spread that glue around a little bit. Make sure that we're lining up with that line, that's good. Pushing it over, a bit of an eyeball in the first instance. Take our support, it needs to come this way just a fraction. So I'll place that there, grab a magnet, and we'll do the same thing. Now be careful when you do this. The 90 degree ends have to be on the line. It's easy to make a mistake and glue it on the wrong way and then you've then the ends don't line up properly. So make sure you've got the right way up. Same deal, a little bit of glue, not too much. Pop it on the line, give it a little bit of a rock around to get that glue spread and now push it up to the line, put it in the center. So it's not quite at the end there and it's not quite at the end. A little bit of a gap, that's okay. Get it on the line, there we go, that's good. Pop it in place a little bit longer so we'll whack two magnets on it and then the last one. And there we have it, just needs to go that way just a little bit, that's it, perfect. On the line, goes down the center of it, there we go. So it's just a little bit of a gap either end like the last one. Squeeze it down, pop the magnets on. We'll give that about 10 minutes so it's got a good strong bond because next we're going to uh, seal the uh, MDF. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to seal the MDF. Now, MDF, like a lot of woods, um, absorbs the uh, paint um, quite quickly and that uh, you know consumes more paint, so we don't want to do that because that's obviously fairly expensive. So I've made up a, my own brew of sealer, which is 50% speed bond and 50% water. I'm using a container that uh, uh, I emptied in the Vallejo um, primers, so I don't throw these out because I clean them and use them for special mixes, etc. This also has a small amount of the black and a small amount of the gray in there to give it a little bit of color so that when we're painting it on we can see what we've done. Probably won't use the black again. The last time I did this just with the gray I think it was adequate and the black just doesn't seem to be mixing quite as well as I would have liked. You'll see that as I start applying it. So first up we do the underside of everything and the inside of the building and then when that dries we'll do the outside. Now the floor we're not going to be painting but we'll put a sealer on it anyway because when you mount this into your scene it might be on plaster or um, you might be gluing it down or whatever. What we don't want is the floor to, to warp. It doesn't have to be a particularly wonderful paint job. Most important thing is, is that you give it some good coverage making sure that we get these tab areas coated. 
The coat is not critical but we don't really want large build-ups anywhere because in the next stages we give it a bit of a sand. You don't want to be sanding the sealer down and then going through to timber because then you're going to have to do it again. Make sure that's a good coat but an even coat as much as possible. We'll let that uh, dry to the point that it's touch dry so we can handle it to give the other side a coat. Okay so these are now dry enough. You'll notice that when you feel it, it has a very furry feel about it, a little bit like uh, very fine sandpaper. Don't be concerned about that at this stage because we will be giving that a little bit of a sand back, uh, certainly on the surfaces that we're going to be painting. But now what we'll do is we'll paint the other sides. So let's uh, get started with that process. I'm doing the roof section last because there, there will be pieces of debris that will come away from that when we do it. So I don't really want that on the face of the panels. Now unlike the brick panel that we do the same process to on other builds, uh, I do want to get a good liberal coat in here. I do want all this texture as much as possible to be filled in. So we will allow a little bit more to, uh, to sit on the surface and hopefully it will soak in and find its own little level. Now flick away any grit pieces as much as you possibly can. Again, in my view, a few little pieces of grit, not the end of the earth, because in real life, with uh, you know weather and storms and bits and pieces, when you look on, on roofs, it's amazing what ends up there. So I'm not as concerned. There you go, they're all coated. We'll give them some time to dry before we sand it. So again, they'll need about an hour, even though this is now touch dry, um, and we were able to get on to the um, other coat quickly, I do want the... I do want this coat to be very dry when it comes to sanding because if it's not it will clog your sanding blocks and you'll go through those much faster. Like... Okay so I'm set up now ready to paint the uh, walls for our shop. The um, paint that I'm going to use is the Vallejo and the colour is US Khaki. The final um, theme of this will be that we're going to go for a little bit of a stacco look so I'm going to be adding some texture to the concrete uh, and the final colour will be a, a, a sort of a sandy colour so this is a, a, a good colour to use as a primer. The um, concrete I haven't decided yet whether we're going to have it as a painted concrete floor or whether we're going to go with a, uh, a concrete colour itself. So I'll think about that once I see how the rest of the, the colours on the trim and everything come up. Turn our air on and we'll paint the inside of the walls first. Now we're not trying to give it a finished coverage, we just want to mist it on enough that we're sealing. So there we put too much, so it potentially would run. So I've got a little bit too heavy on that coat, so it's a case of just brush it over lightly. It doesn't matter if we don't quite get it all. The rest of the uh, the rest of the, the painting process will finish it off nicely. This is really adding to the sealing process. Now with the roof, I do want this to be a little bit heavy, just enough. So the paint starts to fill a little bit of that texture that's there from the laser. Now we'll just give that 5-10 minutes to dry enough that it's touch dry so that I can paint the front face. Okay so now what we'll do is we'll coat the front face with its undercoat on the four panels. So we'll get our air going. So that's all done, we'll let that dry overnight and we'll go on to the next stage of painting. So the next step is to trim away the 3D model parts from the sprues, give them a light sand so they're prepared for painting. Um, I attach them to some skewers to make the painting process much easier. And like everything else, I try to do it in you know, batch type process. I match up the items with the primer colour that I'm going to use. So in this instance, first up, we'll uh, start with the bins, work our way through. This one's going to be the, the hardest one to do. It's not particularly difficult, but a little bit involved. Um, and we'll take a bit of time over that. All right, let's get started. So this bin 
is uh, is quite neat. It has a lid that's slightly open and you can see rubbish inside. So we need to just very carefully snip the rear sprues away and then take the sprue off. Let's just grab a little bin off camera to put things in and then work around the base. Okay, so there we go. We just need to give these little bits a bit of a haircut and the base and now that's ready for sanding. So pop him to one side. This is a little power meter box. Um, the tricky part about this is that these cables that come out the bottom, you need to just very, very carefully snip underneath the cable on both sides and then remove a small piece of the sprue working your way down so that way when it's not going to damage the, the cable anyway. Now we've got a nice little gap. Okay, I go to the back end, give that a snip and a snip in the middle and we now have it away and then again we'll just sort of clean up any excess and have that ready for the base to be sanded. A little light, pretty set straightforward, just got a couple of spots that just need to be done. The other bins, these bins, very easy, one cut, nice and close. Get up right up underneath it, give it a good cut. Now I should have said earlier, your cutters will have a flat side and a beveled side. The flat side goes up against the model, the bevel side goes away. Now these ones are a little tricky because we've got the bin lid attached to the side of the bin and the bin has got lots of rubbish and if you have a look closely at it you'll see there's little bottles in there and cans and various things so we need to just so we don't damage the lid just very gently snip away at it yep. give yourself a little bit of space so that we've now cut it away so we've got some air underneath and then go into the back and cut the bin away okay so that's all good a little bit of a haircut here again ready for sanding repeat the process on this one very gently if you take your time 99% of the time you won't have any problems if you do break something a little bit of super glue as you can tell I'm a bit of a fan of the deluxe materials products so I have their uh, range of super glues and uh, plastic cements um, and other products at hand all the time um, they're good they last and they're very economical okay windows same sort of thing you work your way around removing the parts just have a look to clean up any large pieces that are left behind that's good the door starting at the back by trimming away some of the excess sprue it gets you nice and close to where a sprue underneath is that um, you can get your pliers nice and flat up against the model itself like I've done with the other things just to clean up any large pieces that are left behind ready for sanding or filing in this case both okay so there's main parts now this is one that I cut out earlier to give you an idea of where we're going so I start by cutting away the edges and trying to relieve as much tension from it as I possibly can and then I work around the awning area and then take off the base so let's get going down the sides if it doesn't quite cut all the way through doesn't matter too much removing the excess sprue okay so we've done that side now we'll work our way down this side what we want to do here is get our cutters and go in so that we can get both where the awning is so there's two sprues on each of the ribs and one in the middle and what we want to try and do which depending on your cutters you should be fine to do it get up nice and close and just snip away at all of those and then once you've done that work your way along the base and there you have it next we'll we'll sand and clean up these edges and at this stage uh, because we don't want to handle this a lot after it's painted we will sand back the sides and the top and bottom fit it to the panel that's going to go in okay so we've now cut everything away next we're going to sand the little pieces so we'll start with the bins very gently wipe them backwards and forwards make sure they stand up relatively straight there's a little bit off the top actually we'll do that with a file now that section will be seen, so we do want to make it nice and flat. Now the power box, 
just still got a couple of little pimples on it. We'll just remove those. This is critical that we simply we drag it away from the end. If we don't do that, those little wires will probably snap off and they'll be a pain to try and glue on. Now not all meter boxes have the wires coming out the bottom, so you can cut them away if you want. And if you break it off, well, that's perfectly fine like that too. Alright, now the doors and windows. The windows need use a, a square needle file. The windows need the edges where they go into the cutouts. Sand it away, get the little pimples off. Then the door, we run it backwards and forwards, sand the back, and very gently holding it upright. The same thing with the base. Dust it off, make sure you've got it all right. And then with your file, same thing as the windows, just clean up the edges where it goes into the building. Now last, we need to do this piece. And what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do is get the wall and just give it a little bit of a clean up on the bottom. Now this needs to slide in there neatly and it's deliberately quite a bit too wide. And the reason for that is that sometimes the printing process with all of the forces, these edges aren't always straight. So the first thing we want to do is just clean up the uh, awning. So without getting too far up the awning, we just want to take off the spots where the sprues attached. Keep plowing them down until such time as you've got a clean edge, which we're getting close to. And I'm being careful not to rub up against the face. A little bit on that front face. Not too much. It may end up being a little bit wavy. And if that's the case, then in my mind, it's a canvas cover. Let's uh, glue the skewers on. You probably won't see this in the video, but the corners have a slight protrusion. And the reason for that is that when we make them, we make them deliberately that way so that when you file it off flat or sand it back flat, you've got some material to remove. There we go, nice and flat. And then what I'll do is when we start to fit it, whatever is left over will come off the bottom, which probably not going to need any. All right, so next we start with the, the ends. And you're going to be sanding away about 30 seconds or a quarter of a mil on each end. The amount does vary a little bit based on uh, how the cut happened on the laser. Different uh, days with different temperatures, the beam is fractionally wider or narrower. Yeah, we've got about 30 seconds to take off each side. Now we've got it flat. Keep sanding away carefully taking some off each side and be careful not to press too hard on it that you don't snap the window panes but you do need to hold it reasonably firmly push it up against there and then just push it out just a fraction now if you don't have the uh, facilities to make a sanding block like this Micromart have uh, one that you can get somewhere around $50 US plus shipping yep there we go That'll fit up nicely. And that's now ready for painting. So what I'll do is uh, get a little bit of scrap. Make sure you get all the dust off now because you're not going to be able to dust this afterwards. So we're just going to put a couple of little dobs. Okay, let that dry up. So I now have all of my 3D parts mounted ready and getting the undercoat on. Okay, so we're ready to start painting. I'm going to paint the windows, the door, and the little lamp with the Vallejo Surface Primer Israel Grey. I've pre-mixed some of that into the airbrush, and so I'm pretty much ready to go. All I need to do now is turn on the airboat and start with the, uh, the first item. So what we want to do is we just want to mist it. We don't want to put too much on in the first go. Just let a little misting coat come back in a minute. Remember this is just an undercoat going on to uh, help the final colours um, adhere. Okay, so what I'm going to do is give the bins and, uh, and the meter box a coat of light grey.
just putting a little mist coat on. We're not trying to get full coverage because if you do that, you pretty much guarantee you'll end up the run. And a run on this size product, you'll uh, lose the detail. Okay, so for the shop, I'm going to give it a coat of the Vallejo um, Grey Primer. Okay, so I'll put that to one side and let it... Okay, so now our little awning is ready for its second coat. Okay, so we're now ready to paint the inside walls, the floor and the roof. For the walls, I'm going to do a, a mix of uh, Desert Tan and Ghost Grey, uh, the Vallejo primers. I want a, a greyish version of the, of the tan. So I have a little container. We'll start by putting some of the tan colour in. This is uh, no exact science. We're just going to eyeball it and come up with something that I particularly like. Hopefully you will too. I'm just going to increase the volume a little bit because the outside walls will get the same colour. Um, we're going to apply a very thin coat of the Vallejo Thick Mud to give it a sort of stacco type look. That's pretty close to what I'm looking for. It's a sort of a dirty tan colour. I'll pour about a little over a third, maybe about 40% of that into the gun. We'll first of all add a little bit of thinner, a bit more paint, a little bit more thinner. We'll backflow the airbrush to mix all that. So what's happening here is I'm just pulling the trigger back enough and I'm blocking the nozzle so that the air comes back into the pot. And that process is mixing the paint and the thinner so we've got a nice consistent mix. And that looks pretty good. We'll put our cap on and we'll get the air going and the compressor and we'll start painting. And we're not trying to do this in one go. So it takes several coats to get up, so we're sort of misting the first, first layer. We'll give those a, a moment for the uh, paint to dry up a little bit, and uh, we'll give them another coat now, and then we'll let them sit overnight and come back and put a, uh, uh, another coat on tomorrow. Okay, so that's our first coat. We'll uh, come back tomorrow after that's had a good uh, 10 hours, 12 hours to, to dry and then we can give it a very light rub and uh, hopefully the next coat will be the finished coat for the inside sections. So I have my 3D parts now undercoated. I have uh, walls and roof um, undercoated and a uh, internal walls have a coat on them. Um, however, I made a mistake and I didn't realize it until I went to fit the, uh, the front um, window section. What I have done, this building is designed to be at ground floor, whereas this section here is there mainly so that you can have um, a platform in front from a railway point of view or a taller building if it's a more of an industrial building. And this building is a shop. So we do need to take these bottom sections off each of the panels. So I'll just need to give that a little bit of a sand to clean them up. Okay, so now I'm just working on making sure everything fits together. You may need to file a little bit of paint away. The bottoms may need to have a, a, uh, a little bit more of a thorough sand just to get everything lined up. If you have sanding block like this, it's, um, it's a good tool for just knocking back those sprue parts quickly and getting it nice and smooth and uh, making it a good fit. If they don't quite line up, um, you want to have the top and the bottom lining up. And if one panel is slightly up or down, you can adjust it at the um, joint. Or if one is slightly higher than the others, then you can just sand off the bottom or the top, whichever is uh, whichever way it, it sits. So this one just needs a little bit off the bottom. Yep, so that one's quite good. So we've now got our panels lining up nicely. We'll test fit them together on the corners. I'll drop the floor in there 
as a spacer for the moment. Okay, there we go. That's come together nicely. All right, so. Okay, so I've got my airbrush loaded with the color. We're just gonna give it a quick squirt. Okay, so we're now going to glue the walls together. Now I'm not gluing the floor in at this stage, I'm just going to use it um, more as a reference just to make sure everything's nice and square. So the first thing I'll do is make sure I get the right wall. First thing I'll do is I'll just double check to make sure it's all fitting together the way it should. Squeeze it to make sure it's in good and proper. Yep. Yep, that's fine. Okay, so we'll start with this corner. A little bit of glue where the two faces are going to meet. Same thing with this one. Got a little working time, so we don't need to rush ourselves so we make mistakes. Put our floor in there, put a couple of lackeys. Turn on a bunch of them to make sure that it's good and tight. The more you squeeze it together, the stronger the joints will be. If you look inside, you'll see that there's a little bit too much glue. So just with a, a skewer, I'm going to wipe that away. We'll leave that for 20 minutes because we want the glue to be good and strong for the next part. Okay. So our little shop is uh, dry enough now to handle, so we'll take the lackeys off. Uh, there's a 3D printed shop face to go in here, and of course windows and door for the back. And I'm going to have, as far as a look is concerned, uh, a little bit of a stacco type look. So I will be putting a cap trim on the top, and I'm going to put pilasters on the front two corners. But the back two corners I'm going to fill in with the uh, Deluxe Materials Model Light. This line here will disappear. Where these lines go through to the corners, we'll just scribe those back in afterwards. So we're going to fill this section with, uh, with the filler on both sides. And at the front we're not going to do anything because the pilasters will be glued on to uh, hide um, the marks and the joint. So. First up, we'll, uh, we'll get our pilasters and uh, roof trim on because that way if there's any little gaps in those we can put the model light on there at the same time and then very carefully we'll blend the two corners together so we've got a nice square corner. So on your pilaster sheet there's a series of 5mm wide pilasters and 4mm and we'll just get a knife and I want two 5mm and two four mil. Now, these have been designed to go in there like so, and that line doubles as a line for you to line things up. Now, because we don't have the step for the platform, we'll be cutting this last, this little piece off the bottom, and then we'll get the four mil one, we'll go like so, and the five mil one, we'll glue it on so that it overlaps corner to disguise the joint as much as possible. All right, I'll go ahead and put those on and I'll be gluing them on, of course, with speed bond. Okay, so there's the first corner finished, all glued on. Now I'll actually go through the process because there's just a couple of little tips that I probably should point out. So first of all, we just very carefully cut away the bottom piece and so that little engraving line that lines up is uh, your, your reference point. So we'll do that on both of them. Now, the first one that we glue on is the sidewall one. And we want to have just enough glue to hold it, but at the same time, it wants to be just a little bit wet. And the reason for that is that we do want to be able to maneuver it once it's in place. We need to be able to make sure that, that it lines up with the pilaster on, on the top and that these detail lines line up. And when you've got that there, we then run a bead of glue down this side for the other one, just making sure there's a little bit on the edge of the pilaster, because that way 
the two will glue together and, and they'll probably be stronger but it will be uh, it will conceal the joint more so we put that one on top and make sure that the engraving line lines up and push them together just very carefully with your finger feeling that it's lined up have a look down eyeball that it's nice and square and not sitting up on an angle and there we have it now when that dries whoops when that dries we'll add uh, a little bit of model light on the corner just to square it off so there you go both sides done of course if there's any unwanted glue we'll just remove that excellent okay now for the top pieces we'll just cut them out of their holding frame the little tabs are on the 45 degree part starting at the front just get one sit it up there so that it sits corner to corner now if it doesn't quite and there's a little bit of a gap again we'll use model light to solve that problem so we just want to make sure that it's going to go where we want it to go and the back edge the inside of the building edge is flush at the back the overhang is on the front which overhangs the top of the pillars so that one's fine Dot a little bit of glue slide it backwards and forwards a little bit to squeeze that glue out and then with your finger just run along the back edge to make sure that it's flush there and it's sitting in the middle so if if it doesn't quite go to the corner don't be overly concerned about that at this stage because we will fix that now working down the side same thing we'll just get our part and we'll just slide it backwards and forwards to get the glue to spread the same to the other side and last we'll just be just nice and we'll just again run a little bit of glue along slide it on off a little bit push it together and hey presto so our shop has these little gaps in the corners they'll disappear once we get a little bit of model light on them and give them a light sand what i might do is just put a little bit of weight on it actually what i will do do it the other way we'll go like so so we'll just leave that for a few minutes to let the glue really tack up and then the weights can come off The glue has now had enough time to set up nicely so we'll take some of our model light and uh, just touch up these little gaps and finish off the corner on the back here um, and uh, anywhere else we see there might be a potential little problem. I'll do the corners last and any bits on the front here that I need to do. First of all I'm going to concentrate on doing these two back corners and like I said this line here and the one on the other side I'm going to fill in but I will end up um, filling in some of the others but I'll scrape them back out afterwards so let's get started so the method of application is pretty straightforward you scrub it into the surface first to get some of the bonding agent to adhere to the surface and then you look at building it up now most of the time I find that I'm going to have to put at least two applications and sometimes as many as four to get my corner absolutely perfect so the first coat is not that critical that it's particularly thick in fact it's better that it's not what we're looking for here is really preparing the surface so that it's right for uh, the next coats now i've gone a little bit up underneath the pilaster and that'll sand out and scrape away or cut with a knife when i'm cleaning up so I'm not bothered about it at the moment. I just focused on getting this first layer where I want it. Now before I move on to the other, I'm going to take a scriber. This is so that I reduce the work later. And I'm just going to clean these lines that I've put some material into by mistake. That one side, around the corners, just on the top, smear it in. You can see I've gone into the inside there a little bit. Don't worry about it at this stage. It'll clean off with a knife and it dries better than trying to get it perfect at the moment. Wipe it into the joint where the pilaster meets it on the front. And then on the pilaster itself, just run it down that edge where the front edge joins the side. So the model light is now dry enough to uh, start giving it a very gentle sand and uh, scrape away any pieces that are a little bit... Uh, too proud so I start with a knife and just cut away anything that I can without having to sand 
Okay, so we don't want to, when we're sanding the pilaster sections, we don't want to get on the angle and sand here. We are going to be sanding a bit of that when we sand this side. But the pilaster, we just want to try and keep the sanding block in line with the, or rather flat against the cardboard. Okay, a really good dust off. Get into those grooves because we want to see whether they're blocked. Okay, so now this part we're dragging the knife backward. The model light will just break away and if we do it like this we, uh, we won't damage what we're working on. We're going to get rid of the bulk of it. And that, you need to be a little bit careful because we don't want to be exposing the wood which we're just starting to at the bottom. It's probably because this section here is a little bit proud. Going to get in there with a knife. Um, there's a little sort of dotted line, the perforated type line where the laser cuts. Also want to just take that back a little bit as well. We don't want to put too much on, but we do want to build up the corner. So I'm sort of using my fingers to act a little bit like a trowel and trying to build the edge up a little. Wait for that to dry and then sand it back again. And So we'll sand this uh, edges back again and I just run my fingers over first just to uh, remove any high spots that'll just flake off. All right and then very gently start sand. You do it very very gently because you only want to break away any high spot. You don't want to chip a whole piece off because that'll cause you to have to start again. Remember we're just taking it back to surface level trying not to remove too much or any of the undercoat. You need to make sure when you get down to places like this that we're getting a nice feathered edge. Yes, it's going to need another little build up on that corner, just a bit on that way up there as well. But that's getting pretty close. Okay, so now these little architectural detail lines, we want to make sure that we clean those up properly this time. Okay, that's looking good. So I'll uh, put a little bit more just on these corner pieces. After that, before we do that though, we'll fix up these lines. It just happens that the razor saw happens to be the right thickness for the thicker line. Now, using the line as a guide, very carefully cut away that groove. Good, that's cleaned that one out nicely. Very, very light little stroke. Now we've got it back. Okay, now I know I'm going to fill those back in again, but by doing it each time, you lessen the risk of chipping the corner. If it was going to chip, it would chip now. And uh, if we are chipping next time round, we're only going to chip very slight the uh, corner itself that we've just added. All right, I'll put a little bit more material on and we'll set it aside to dry and get on with the next stage. Again, first of all, rub it in, get a bit of the bonding agent to stick. This is a case of just sort of padding it down now where you want to build the corner up so that it's proud. Now because there's a very thin layer that's, that is going to be proud, it doesn't have a lot to bond to so we want to be very careful in the sanding process. Just take your time, work it in, get that little lip sticking out using two fingers and a pinching motion just builds it up. And you know, if there is a little bit of a chip out of the corner or somewhere, who's to say that didn't happen after the building was built? Again, you know, there's a little bit of wear and tear on, on life, and uh, the same thing applies to uh, model buildings. If we make them all absolutely pristine, then it becomes very plasticky looking, and we're looking for, for realism. So we set that aside. Let it dry up. So the model light has dried up nicely. We can now sand it back. So the first thing is I'll rough any sort of loose pieces off my finger. Just give it a quick little rub because we don't want those pieces jamming up underneath the sand block. All right. So starting on this corner, feel for the high pieces. We'll just gently knock them back down. We want to make it level with the paint. So if anything, when I'm sanding, the little bit of pressure I'm putting is more on the top where I'm sanding that way I'm not rubbing this back okay that looks good let's get the air going a 
There's a couple of little tiny pinholes and ordinarily I would go back and maybe mix up just a, a little bit of the model light with just a tiny little bit of water on the end of my finger to fix those. But as we're going to be applying some of the Vallejo thick mud as like a stacco type finish, you won't see them anyway. So the next thing I would do is make sure that all of these architectural lines are nice and defined because the mud will also fill those in to a degree. Fine, but um, I just want them there in the first place. Uh, so the next stage is we're just going to airbrush the pilasters and the roof and the corners just to uh, seal them up before we put the mud on. I've chosen to do it this way with the two pilasters at the front of the building and none at the back. Uh, we supply you with the card to do it both ends or if you don't want the pilasters you can do this technique on both ends. The whole design concept around this system is very much a mix and match, change as you like, um, build the building to suit the time period, etc. Anything that you're, you're looking for, it allows you to be very flexible. Um, and in addition, uh, you could join several of these together and, uh, and have you know, a, a row of three or four shops. You could extend it. There's lots of things that you can do with this system. It's almost you know, never end. It's really up to you and your imagination. Okay, so I'll just give it a little bit of a wipe with a, just a very lightly damp cloth just to remove the last of the dust. Um, okay, and so we're only really going to be focusing on the corners and uh, the roof trim and the pilasters. So let's get started. Quick squirt with the gun to make sure it's right. Let's turn the air on. You probably can't see it, but the card, especially the edges where we've been sanding, is quite furry. So. Uh, just get enough paint on there to bond cardboard. That way we'll be able to get a very light sand, remove that fur surface finish back. Probably take two or three coats to do that, but um, well worth the effort. Slowly working, building it up. Just more to let the uh, cardboard soak a little bit of paint into the surface, so then we'll act as a bonding agent for us. This is a slightly different process to if it was timber or plastic because um, I am going to let it soak in and I am going to add some more now because the minute you touch it with a little bit of sandpaper you'll go back to the card and that's why it will take a couple of goes to get this right. Yeah. That's enough for the moment, we'll let that uh, dry up and... So we're now going to do the uh, stucco finish and as I've said before I'm going to use Vallejo's thick mud. I've got a brush and it's the way to do it. As an example here it's just a dabbing motion turning the brush. The little lumps that will stick up just before it gets too dry you run your fingers over it and remove those because otherwise they look like stones but uh, that should uh, come up looking nice. All right let's be careful where we're going up against the pilasters because we want those to stay the way they are. Of course along the edge where the uh, roof trim is. Again, just a little bit of patience, take your time, work your way out, try not to get too much on at a time, keep going backwards and forwards, evening it out, getting a, as much of a random texture as you possibly can. A little bit extra dab into those grooves because we want to make, don't want to fill them. If you do happen to get, which I have just there, a little bit up the top or on any of the other parts, don't worry about it too much at this stage. Just uh, keep going. We'll touch those up with a brush afterwards. Let's see if I can get the light on that thing to the texture. Yes, I think that looks really cool. All right, keep going. Fairly thin thin just really color around the doorway and windows because the 3d parts have got uh, trim on them i'm really just trying to get the color up underneath there which now the brush has sprayed splayed quite a bit it's a little bit harder to control but that's okay like i said we'll just give that a little a very very slight rub and um, we'll just hand brush it 
and the main reason why the brush is out as far as it is is because it's totally loaded full of grit which of course is making all the, the bristles jump out like that. I keep checking because I want to try and make sure that what I'm doing is the same on the other side because I want the building to have a consistent look all the way around. It's looking pretty much like that. A little bit different on this side but that's because the brush has got a bit crazy. Grab it slightly differently. I don't want to get on the pilasters but I am happy with this. This is looking really cool. A quick look to see how consistent it is and I'm quite happy that's not bad. All right so uh, whack that in uh, our little dehumidifier. If you uh, if you didn't see the video on that yesterday check it out. I've been working all day in a very moist environment. We've got lots of rain and storms over here at the moment and uh, I've been able to continue painting and working on different parts by um, really just letting it sit for about the same amount of time or less time than what I was letting it sit for a couple of days ago when it was uh, warmish. Anyway. Okay, so for our shop, I'm going to do the front of the shop and awning and the door and windows with dark green from Vallejo. So I've got to be a bit brave, we'll see how that comes out. Compressor on, in the air, and away we go. We might need to do a uh, second coat of this. Yep, I'll have to put a second coat on that. Okay, so I'll stop at that and uh, we'll let that uh, dry up and we'll give it another coat shortly. Alright, so we're at the point now where we've got the stacco on it and um, we uh, are going to now fit front facade window. Um, and we're going to put in the rear window and doors and uh, fit the roof in um, and then once that's done uh, there's a couple of little touch-ups to do um, but for the most part um, it's very close to finished so let's start with the front just needs a whisker more off the sides you need to be really careful that you don't rock it over and touch the side of this on the awning. Okay, so that fits nicely. We just need to take a little bit off the bottom and a little bit off the top. And that will be done. Okay, that fits in nice. Lines up the back. So it's slightly recessed at the front. Alright, I'm happy with that. That fits in nicely. Happy with that. All right. Now it's a little bit too uh, pristine at this stage, so you know it needs to have a bit of weathering and grime and what have you. But um, that's heading in the right direction now. So what I would need to do next is just sand the front of that a little bit of an angle so it drops in place. I said I was going to do this off camera but part of my goal is to help uh, new modelers or modelers that don't have uh, lots of hand skills. So the way I'm going to sand this is this sits in on an angle, I'm exaggerating it. If we sand the front edge on a on a bit of an angle then it will just slide in and uh, drop into place. It doesn't need much. It's just probably a little bit off the end and a slight angle will be fine. So to do that I just simply put it up against the bench on, on about the angle that I think it needs and take my sanding block and just sand the end. Now if, if the angle that I'm sanding is greater then it doesn't matter. What you don't want to do is sand it the other way because it's better to have a knife edge up against the front. So just sand a little bit, test fit it. See now that's right on the cusp, just needs a little bit more. Fit on this side. Just keep going until we get there. We're not far away. I 
you might want the roof to be a bit of a loose fit and the reason for that is that in this field right now I'm not putting lights in um, and I may want to do that at a future date and there you go drops in just relieve this back edge just a, a tiny bit that way if the wood swells it won't jam yep. there we go that's uh, I think a reasonably cool looking building you know, it needs a, a Coca-Cola sign on the side, or um, I mean, this is this is a uh, fairly generic style of building that could be, you know, any sort of shop or office for that matter. So um, you know, it could be an accountant's. It could be uh, uh, could even be a bank building. Um, so you know, this style of building has many many uses, and uh, you know, I could easily see you have you know half a dozen of them next to each other. Um, you know, maybe with uh, a gap between them, or maybe even some of them butted up. But um, but there we go. Now our model is approaching being finished. Um, it's time to think about how I'm going to display it in what sort of diorama. And what I've decided to do is to make a corner scene with a little bit of a roadway, a footpath around the, the shop, and uh, put a few extra details in the scene to sort of um, make it come to life. Um, so that's the direction that I'm going in. Okay, so I have just masked up the area where we're going to paint the concrete um, footpath. And so I'll pull this away from the desk and I'll just wrap that around like so, just to get it out of our way. And I'll just add a couple bits of tape at the back. All right. Yep, so that looks good. I'll get organised now to give that a quick coat of, of the uh, concrete colour that I made up. Okay, so we'll put on our concrete colour. So I'm going to let that dry and uh, then I'll decide whether to put another coat on it or not. Actually, I'll just air dry a little bit. Maybe put just a little bit more on. All right, we'll uh, move on to the next stage. Now this section of the diorama uh, is the back and laneway, um, if you can imagine there's other buildings around it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going, I am going to go down the path of making that a, a, a dirt uh, area. And what I'm going to do is mist on these three colours. So brown sand, orange brown and red leather. Um, I think they're a sort of a gravelly type look and uh, we'll just slowly build it up and see how we go. Right, so move on to the orange brown. We'll go with the um, red leather next. Okay. So I've actually used quite a variety of colours to come up with what I think is a uh, sort of a gravelly sandy sort of colour and basically the technique was that I wasn't really spraying it on directly, I was spraying it across. So you can still see quite a, quite a bit of the dark colour coming through so now it, it's at the, the colour is actually a build up of a bunch of different colours giving you that sort of look which I think doesn't look too bad I think it's pretty close and I think it'll suit what I'm looking for so um, let's peel the tape off and see what the result is now don't forget at this stage I haven't done any dusting of the road or the pathway or anything like that but I think that's looking uh, something fairly respectable let's just grab our building yeah, I think by the time we dust the building and put a bit of grime around, uh, put our rubbish bins in the side here and, um, you know, a couple of people, uh, I think that's going to look uh, really quite smart. Now, off camera, I had a couple of little spots where the grey from the footpath had snuck underneath the uh, masking tape. So I've added some additional marks on the road to look like uh, patches and the bits that they're doing and while I still have that last tanny colour um, given that the road out the back or the, the back driveway area 
it's got that on the uh, dust from that will be on the road so I'm just now dusting the footpath very lightly with that colour and uh, we'll put, put something else down as well making up the, the scene a little bit and while I'm doing that I'm going to uh, sit in the building there so they can get a little bit of attention at the same time back in a sec Now the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to spray on uh, a little bit of Vallejo wash, the light grey, and that'll just grimy it up a little bit. So a bit of that sort of uh, black dust that you get from road grime, etc. A couple of heavy spots here and there. So we'll set that aside, let it dry up, and um, see where we're at, and see if I need to do any more. We're at the point now where the build on the shop is very close to being finished, other than making the scene come to life with some detail parts, etc. One of the things that I want to do is that the rear windows on the shop, and the rear door window, I want to just dirty the glass a little bit. The front window and, and door window we're just going to leave clean because hopefully the, our shop owner is a, uh, a good shop owner and keeps, keeps those things clean. So I've got a, a bit of a dirty dusty uh, brownie colour and it's just really fleckling on, very very light mist from quite a distance. That's it. Now you're probably not going to see that in the video. It just adds that little bit of realism. We'll do the same thing for the glass for the rear door. Okay, so our shop's now ready to have the glass fitted. The front window needs to be take, cut out of its little tabs. Take our shop front out, take our canopy glue and just put a few drops of glue in a couple of spots. This dries really clear so if you do get a little bit on the glass it's not critical. Do the same for the door. One side for a sec, let it dry a little bit. Go to the back, pop our, our door and two windows out. And the windows are in a supporting frame as well, we want to give want to cut those free little dob in the corner. We'll take our storefront and we'll pop it back in but this time we'll just put a bit of canopy glue. I line it up so the back of the shop front is level with the inside of the, the wall. Although it dries absolutely clear it still doesn't hurt to, move, to remove any excess. And then have a good look at the front just to make sure that it has lined up properly. You haven't pushed it too far through so that it looks the same all the way around and then very carefully lay it upside down um, you want to do that because you want to let it to, to sit and you don't if you drag it you'll move the front um, now do the same thing for the doorway a little bit of glue on the door itself same things for the windows making sure that the window sill part is at the bottom Wish you didn't get it square, check your front to make sure it's still sitting correctly and then just leave it like so for about half an hour for the glue to set up. So we're now at the point where we're going to start to look at finishing the shop off and I've been thinking for a few days as to what we would call the shop and my good wife came up with the idea of, as it's a general store, why not Lee's general store? A little bit of tongue-in-cheek there I think but nevertheless so we're going to put some signs on and we supply you with a bunch of signs we'll be putting a sign on the front either side and one on top of the awning for the general store signs plus we've got some old-fashioned coca-cola um, wiggly chewing gum signs and we're going to place those on the sides as well so let's get started 
So the first thing we're going to do is cut our signs out and it's really important to have a sharp knife. So with jobs like this I just put a new blade in. So very carefully cut along the edge. You may choose to give this building a completely different look and use it as an office building or some other type of structure. So if you need to make signs up the paper that we're using is just straight 80 GSM bond paper, typical office paper. And we've printed these signs using a small office Xerox printer. You could probably use an inkjet printer, but I would, I would test it first to make sure that the inks don't run when you apply the glue solution. So there we have three of our signs. With the signs, what you need to do is sand the back down. And all I use is a piece of 180 grit sandpaper. I hold the sign at one end and just very gently stroke away, removing, don't push too hard otherwise you'll tear the paper. Just removing a, you know, a good layer, wipe that away, go around the other end, do the same thing. Now it needs to be reasonably thin because we're putting it on a textured wall and so we need to be able to wet it enough to push it into that texture. What I'm doing now is I'm just using some 320 grit just to remove any fur balls and then we'll give it a good wipe. Okay, happy with that. All right, so I'll do the first one. Now take your sign and place it centrally, holding one end down and just rolling your finger along to make sure you're happy with its position. Yep, okay. And then when you've done that, what we'll do is we'll just roll the sign back. We'll take our paintbrush and our mixed glue solution and we'll paint it on the building. Peel the other end back, do the same thing, get it good and wet. You can even put a bit on the paper. Work your way along, squeezing the sign and the glue mixture out. That's okay. Alright, put a little bit of extra glue on the surface to seal it and then we'll just let that dry up. Of course it'll be weathered afterwards. Okay, so I'll go ahead and uh, do the other store signs and then we'll come back and we'll look at putting the signs on the side of the building. So off camera I have decided to go with the Coca-Cola, Wrigley's and Red Rose signs simply because what general store would be a general store without Coca-Cola and Wrigley's has been around for a long time and uh, well a lot of people do enjoy tea so I'm going to go ahead now and put those on. So Lee's general store now has some signs on and as far as the basic kit is concerned it is now complete so what I want to do next is turn this into a little bit of a diorama to show the building off. Now of course the kit is doesn't include the base it does include the concrete floor that's inside it and of course the bins and the windows and doors and all of the parts on the building but to display that building as a bare building won't do justice to it so what we're going to do now is we're going to put some um, grimy dust around to uh, weather the building up a little bit more and uh, and maybe a couple of weeds in the laneway area uh, and we'll possibly add a, um, a person or two walking around the corner of the shop. So. so to turn our little shop into a scene I'm going to use Woodland Scenics Farmers Market. I'll use the shop guy and the trestles and his little table and I'll also use the lady as well to go in the front. And then in the uh, 16 people pack, I'll use a couple of those people walking on the side of the, along the side of the building. I'm also going to use some formal static grass to put some weeds around the back. I'll be using some of SMS scale model supplies weathering pigments, um, dust and concrete dust, and a few other little bits and pieces as we go. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is glue our building down to the baseboard. So a few little drops of speed bond just in the corners and along the long edge. And just carefully place it like so. Okay, so next I'm going to take some RC Modeler's canopy glue and I'm going to put a generous bead along the edge. And then I'm going to put some ground foam. To be honest with you, I'm not 100% certain where I got this mix from I know it was something that I mixed up so it's probably Woodland Scenics seeing as I have quite a bit of the Woodland Scenic foam so I'm just going to sprinkle some on and then I'll dab it into that 
and we'll just give that a little while and that'll dry up and we'll get rid of the excess get rid of some of it now because I want to keep keep working now I'm also going to put um, a, uh, a bead just a very thin bead along this edge as well because I'll be doing a bit of dusting of dirt along here and I want it to have a fillet to uh, stick to and as this dries clear it's just perfect for that and the same down this side as well that way that little gap that you see will virtually disappear when we add the weathering powders now Bellus Magic is a powder adhesive um, mainly used for putting bellus down but I'm going to sprinkle a little bit and blow a little bit onto the uh, weeds that I've got growing up here and uh, then we'll moisten that and they'll, it'll permanently bond it. So all I'm doing is I'm just putting a little bit into a container very gently tapping it so that it falls on top like so and then we'll just give that a little spritz and then that will become permanent. That should be enough. Now with the roof I want it to be quite dark so I'm going to apply the uh, SMS um, concrete. I'll scrub it into the surface but stroking it down the building the in the direction that the rain would work, in the direction the rain would go. Again not applying it super evenly because you'll get different types of stains and weather pattern because of the weather patterns and where it, where it falls because of the direction of the building etc. Okay I think that looks pretty good and I'm just going to use just a small amount of the Vallejo carbon black. You need to be fairly careful here because a little bit goes a long way. Just to put a little bit of soot on our chimney and around the base. It's a really nice fine powder. So while I'm waiting for the ground foam and static grass to finish drying up I'm just going to be applying a little bit of weathering powder down the side to disguise a joint. So a little bit of a, a slight brush on there and on the front of the shop and then just a, a few little marks here and there on the pavement itself just to make it a little bit more random in colour. This is very subtle, there's not, not a lot going down. Now I don't know whether you can see or not the texture in the paint. This has been built up with several different colours to try and give it a texture and try and simulate bitumen a little bit. So I'll be putting some weathering powders around there to again break up the uh, the continuous pattern of it but uh, that's starting to uh, come along looking quite nice now just a few little more streaks here and there now I need to do a little bit in the laneway and I need to do the bitumen but I'll do those uh, shortly when things dry up a little bit more I'm now going to add Lee our store owner and uh, one of his customers and the trestles um, and the table just going to place those out the front I've just got a little bit of plastic I'm going to put a tiny, tiny dab of glue on each leg. I'm going to get some tweezers. Okay, I'm going to do the same for the other one. Now, using a toothpick, I'm going to put a generous dab because that way they um, are supporting each other. And we'll take our tabletop and we'll let that sit like so. Okay, as it turns out, he will stand by himself some glue on his feet and I want a little bit on his hand because I want the hand to touch the end of the table. So let's slide him in. Hopefully that will be fine. Granddad's wanting to fall over so we'll just prop him up a little bit, let glue to dry and then we'll glue on Grandma. Okay so we have uh, Nana and Granddad going for a walk with one of their grandchildren. We have Lee our shopkeeper and uh, one of his customers. We've got the um, foliage on the side to uh, 
hide where the building sits. We've got some dry grass that will, uh, once the glue dries, that will sit in, it be uh, obvious there. So the last thing now to do is to apply some weathering around the, the back for the laneway and uh, do the same to the road itself. I'll um, get on with that. So what I'm trying to simulate here is one of the tyre tracks. This laneway is not wide enough for the whole car so I want the tyre track put a bit of dirt on the pavement put a little bit of grey down the, the centre the same thing our roadway is uh, not a full roadway so we're going to be pretending that we've got one tyre mark just the edge of the other tyre using the grimy mix that along the, the edge so that looks a lot better the last thing I'm going to do in the grocery pack from Woodley Scenics we've got a guy carrying sacks and I thought we might just put him there and a couple of... alright so we'll leave him for five minutes to dry and um, I think we are done so thanks for building Lee's general store I hope you had as much fun as I did when I built this model and I'd love to see some photos of your build and perhaps we can put some in our gallery I'm Chris the modeler at ABR Model Works have a great day and happy modeling